this parable really gives us a peek into the heart of God. How he sees things that were lost. In that same chapter, he talks about different things that were lost and have been found. And what's so beautiful is the things that we consider lost, when it comes to God, those things that were lost don't lose value. That's number one. And so if I can just start off by saying anything, if you feel lost, that doesn't mean you lost your value. Luke chapter 15 in the Amplified, it says, Then he said, speaking of Jesus, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them inappropriately said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. So he divided the estate between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered together everything that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in the reckless and immoral living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to do without and be in need. So powerful. So he went and forced himself on one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He would have gladly eaten the care pods that the pigs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger and no one was giving anything to him. But when he finally came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I'm dying here of hunger? I will get up and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just treat me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he came to his father. But while he was still long off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly bring out the best robe. For the guest of honor and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet and bring the fatted calf and slaughter it and let us invite everyone and feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was as good as dead and is alive again and he was lost and has been found. And so they began to celebrate. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there. I'm going to take my time with this one, but let me say this. If you've been running from God, I'm going to give you some motivation to go home. Right? The Bible says the father waited for that son from afar off. Every day waiting for his son. Bible says that the father welcomed him with open arms and said, this son of mine who has been lost, bring out the best robe, put a ring on his finger, give him shoes for his feet and let's celebrate with the finest of meals. It's safe to say that God celebrates when you come back home. When you've been running from God, when you've lost your way, when you've wasted and squandered everything, when you've almost ruined your inheritance? Are you kidding me? When you feel like you've messed everything up. The Bible says when that young man came to his senses, listen, let this be a warning and a sign and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and help you come back to your senses. You gotta come home. And you gotta come home. And when you come home, God's not meeting you with all this, look what you've done. No. God is saying, my son is home. That's such good news, y'all. My son is home. I'm encouraged by that. God celebrates when we come back home. He's not looking at us 
beating us over the head, reminding us all the crazy stuff we did out there. That, that kid was in deep trouble. But watch this now. Now his older son was in the field. And when he returned and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants to begin asking him, what's the celebration for? Like, what's the celebration, man? And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But the elder brother became angry and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he said to his father, look, these many years I have served you and I have never neglected or disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me so much as a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this other son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with immoral women, you slaughtered the fatted calf for him? Talk about drama. And the father said to him, son, you have always, and you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it was fitting it was fitting to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was as good as dead and has begun to live and he was lost and has been found. I want to give encouragement um, to the elder brothers. Okay. You want to know what your motivation is to not get jealous, envious, Frustrated, confused. Why is it this one that does not seem to be faithful? Is not doing as much as you are. You put your hours in. You've served faithfully. You've been honorable. You've done everything right on paper. You. It doesn't seem like you get appreciated as much. You don't get valued as much. It don't seem like nobody sees you. My encouragement is what the father said in that text. Everything that I have is yours. If you've been serving and you've been faithful, you've been honorable and it doesn't seem like you get celebrated as much or appreciated as much, remember exactly what this text says. I mean, it's absolutely true. Leaders, fathers, mothers, usually end up having to affirm the young ones, the unfaithful ones, the ones with the crazy behavior, because what's important is them coming home. And we don't need the people who are faithful to grow jealous or envious. Remember, everything that we have is yours. You are exactly who you think you are, the faithful son. Stay there. This is not the time to let the enemy creep in and make you start doing too much, overcompensating and miss your posts. That, that's not the point of this. Your, your, the, the posture is, what's the main goal? The main goal is to have the family here. The main goal is to have our family saved and rescued, not to fight and compare to see who gets the biggest celebrations. But when it happens, remember that everything the Father has is yours. And my tip to you, practically speaking, see, let me give you a practical tip. If, if, you've, if you're struggling, talk to your father, talk to your mother, talk to your leader. You know, you know, talk to them. Ask them for what it is that you need. Ask them for what it is that you want. Utilize the favor that you have. This is not being entitled. I'm not saying entertain entitlement. I'm not saying that you're owed anything for being faithful. You're doing that unto the Lord anyway. But utilize the simple fact that you remembering that my leaders see me. And if I need anything, I can just ask them. And if you're feeling a little insecure, talk to them. But maturity says I've read my word. And I know that I don't, I don't have to overcompensate. I can celebrate my younger brother. I can celebrate my unfaithful uh, friend. And we're happy that you're home. You know what I'm saying? So that's real though. And let me say this, let me say this. My pastor said it and it really sparked something in me and I, it's, it's, it, it's worth repeating. Um, he was talking about how like, you know, if, if you lost a penny, you're not, you're not gonna go looking for it. If you lost a dime, you're really not gonna go looking for it. But if you lost $10,000, okay, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it back. 
you're going to do whatever it takes to find it. And at the end of the day, is depending on what you value, it's going to have everything to do with how much you go after it, how much you seek after it, how much you fight for it, especially if it's been lost. And if you've lost expensive jewelry, you'll just go the distance. You're going to seek after it. You're going to find it. If you've lost someone you've loved, if you lost someone you love, if you want to be in the presence of someone you love, it sounds crazy, but you're going to do whatever it takes to get back in their presence. And this is the same thing with God. You talk about expensive, you talk about valuable. The presence of God, you don't you don't even really know how expensive it is. And until you've lost or you feel like you've lost. If you lost touch of what his presence is like because you've been running from him. You'll do whatever it takes to get it back. And that's how we need to view the presence of God. The Bible says Jesus wants us to be united with him, vitally united with him. The word vital means absolutely necessary. It's crucial. It's prerequisite. It's mandatory. We have to see our time with God, our life in the presence of God. It's absolutely necessary, vital, it's crucial. This isn't just something that we can misplace or lose. No, no, no. We want to be in the presence of God. And that's not the flesh part of us. Mm -mm. That's the spirit part of us that craves and needs the presence of God. And that's why when it's like people who that need their coffee, you don't have their coffee, they're not going to be good for believers. For those of us who live by the spirit and understand the spiritual part of us. We cannot afford to be outside of the presence of God. We cannot afford to not be in our word and feeding our spirit. It's too valuable to us. It's too meaningful to us. We cannot lose his presence. And so my encouragement to any, any of you guys, anybody that really is struggling to get back into the presence of God, remember how valuable he is to you and stay desperate for him because I've learned the price you pay for being outside of the presence of God is a slow death but a life of confusion.